Right, get this, some of my students still kind of get their unit prefixes right in their heads, by the way, and it's getting all my proverbial, so it is. It's the heavy, actual, easiest thing in the world, but Wayne's pure throw whiteies, man, when they have to figure out how the hell to change milliamps into amps, or microseconds into seconds and all that. So here we go then. Uh, physics is all about how different things work in that, and even though we all think math teachers are a wee bit on the weird end of the nutter spectrum, we do have to use a bit of math to figure out how things in the universe all relate to one another and all that stuff, right? That's when your mad equations and all that come into it. We also pure measure things in different things, like, which we call, you know, like your mad units and that. Sometimes, oh wee man, you have wee tiny amounts and heavy huge amounts of something, so we have to pop a wee prefix in front of our unit, or it'll just look like somebody just pure had an epi with a bunch of zeros, right? Here's your mad prefixes you'll need for your physics in schools, alright? Wee k is for kilo, and it means a thousand times bigger. Capital M is for mega, which is a million times bigger. Capital G is for giga, which is a billion times bigger. Let's go smaller now. We M is for milli, which is a thousand times smaller. Mu is for micro, which is a million times smaller. See this one here, it's weird because we've got all normal letters for other ones, but we've got a mad Greek letter for this one. This letter is the letter mu. If you forget what it is, just think about cows, right? Glasgow cows say mu, but your heavy, snobby, posh cows for Edinburgh say mu. Last one is we n, which is for nano, and it's a billion times smaller. What's it all for then? Well, it's easier to say your average size in atom is 0.1 nanometers instead of you're hitting it with a 0 0.000 blah 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 1 meters, alright? What about saying your energy needed to pure send a DeLorean motor into the future is 1.21 gigawatts instead of saying, here Marty, you need 1,210,000,000 watts of power for your motor, right? But that's only half the battle for Wayne's and physics. They all pure turn into nuggets when they need to change units with prefixes into regular units for equations and that. Like working out milliamps into amps or microseconds into seconds and all that stuff, right? Here's my wee top tip for you then. Right, think about what number goes with a prefix. Like milli's a thousand, mega's a million and all that, right? So get your six numbers in your heads and then do the following wee rule for your units conversions. If the units that you have already are smaller than what you want to change into, then divide by the number. If your units are bigger than what you need to change into, then multiply by the number. So if you are changing 5 milliamps into amps, then you say to yourself, right, milliamps are smaller than amps, so I need to divide by my number. Because it's milli, pure divide by a thousand. If you need to change 430 nanometers into meters, they say, hold on, nanometers are well smaller than meters, so I need to divide. And because it's nano, my number is a billion. What about changing 102.5 megahertz into hertz? You say to yourself, megahertz are bigger than hertz, so I need to multiply my number. For mega, my number's a million. So it's 102,500,000 hertz. If that isn't clear to you, then go and pester your actual physics teacher. He or she? Aye, they make women physics teachers and all now. Weird, isn't it? He or she might have it their own way, but my way is the best, because it doesn't fart about with scientific notation or crap like that. Remember your six numbers, and if you go from small to big, you divide. Big to small, you multiply. It really is nugget proof. Can't you have a